Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Shepherd of the Lake. Um, isn't it so good to gather and get to hear the gospel together? The good news of Jesus that he's forgiven our sins and that Jesus is going to come back one day real soon. So good to see you all. I'm glad we can gather to do this. Um, got a couple announcements before we get started. Um, <clears throat> one is that we will be having an Ash Wednesday service. That will be February 22nd, uh, on the Wednesday, of course, at 6 p.m. And also for our, our other Lent midweek services, those Wednesdays, I put out a thing on the bulletin board out there, and it, it says the dates and also the themes. What we're going to be doing is we'll look at the questions from the Passion narrative. So as Jesus goes to the cross, there's, there's some questions that arise, and that's, those will be the focus for our sermons. So also invite you to come out for those. Um, our uh, <coughs> LAPS uh, presentation was awesome. I think people who came could agree with that. I heard that they're having a banquet, and if, if someone can correct me if I get the dates wrong, please do. But I, I thought it was April 20th, um, and so this would be a way to, to support them. I can certainly get more details to you if you're interested in that. Uh, just let me know. But... <coughs> I think with that, uh, oh, we got one. Yeah, I just wanted a quick announcement that we're going to move the council meeting back from the 15th to the 22nd due to the fact my wife and I can't be here on the 15th. So we'll just uh, move it back one one week. Thank you. There'll be more. I'll have make sure it's in the bulletin. Okay. So that's the, the council meeting will be moved back one week to the 22nd. Right. Um, also, I guess I should, I should say one more thing. If you look in your bulletin towards the back, there's a little blurb there just about um, busy hands for love. Um, and there's, a, there's a, all the stuff that they made is out in the fellowship hall on the table there. If you want to check out the, the good work that they, they've been doing. Um, and yeah, some of that will be going to the Lakes Area Pregnancy Support, which is LAPS, which we just heard uh, presented on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, with that, we'll begin worship. <laughs>
the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? With, with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty, Almighty God, God, have, have mercy, mercy upon us, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. 
Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read our psalm. I'll read the first verse, the congregation will read the next verse, and we'll go back and forth just like that. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. and His righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be ruined. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on the dead He has distributed freely he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. And our epistle reading from the scriptures is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with, with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in you. <coughs> so also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In our gospel passage from the scriptures for today, Jesus taught his disciples who they are in him and how the world needs them. If we went down south to some of our, our snowbird brothers and sisters, we're down there. 
We might say Jesus' words this way. Y'all are the salt of the earth. <laughs> Y'all are the light of the world. Now this gets us across because up here we just say you whether we refer to one person or a group. But down there they say y'all. And see, Jesus was teaching that this identity that he gives to his disciples, it's for every single one of them. Not just one. So how did this impact the world, this identity that Jesus gave to his disciples? Well, if they didn't salt the earth, it would lose its saltiness. In other words, it'd become good for nothing. Well, as Jesus says, um, it'd just be good for people trampling over it with their feet. Um, also, Jesus says that, you know, if they didn't like the world, then no one would glorify God. So an important task Jesus gives to us disciples. Here's the idea behind these images that Jesus is using, this salt and light. The disciples were to do good works. Now, I'll be clear on this. Their works didn't earn them brownie points with God. Okay? They were already Jesus' disciples. Jesus had already called them and blessed them with his forgiveness and all that he had done. And he had given them a new identity in him. It wasn't something they earned, right? But their works did matter for other people. And here's how. When people would see the disciples' good works, then they would glorify God. So the disciples' task was to salt and light the way for others to glorify God. Now, I'm going to focus on this image of salt that Jesus uses, and that's because here in Minnesota, I've heard a couple stories about the snow. Okay, maybe a lot of stories. Um, some of you have had tree branches down in your driveway because the snow was so heavy. Others have had to use a tractor to push back the snow in your driveway because the piles of snow were that big. And what's worse than snow? Well, several times this winter, it has rained just before it snowed. And that means that when you get down there with your shovel, you find ice. And ice is dangerous. People can fall on it, they break bones, rack up hospital bills. And when someone goes someplace that has not been salted properly, and they get hurt, they may not be willing to go that way again. This world of ours, this slippery, dangerous, ice-covered world, needs a lot of salt. Like that salt, the world needs us. Because the way to glorifying God is icy and dangerous. So Jesus calls y'all the salt of the earth. Now, unlike the salt on your driveway, this salt happens when you do good works. It's not just something you, you sprinkle out there, right? Um, and when others see your good works, then the slippery, icy way to glorify God becomes safe. When they see your good works, they're able to come and glorify the Lord. The trouble is, is that um, often we don't salt the way. Some of you hear Jesus say, y'all are the salt of the earth, and you want to say, well, that's fine for someone else sitting here. They're the salt of the earth, not me. But Jesus said, no, y'all, y'all all are the salt of the earth. And, and when we fail to do good works, this is what happens. People think that Christians don't care about people. And worse, they think that our God doesn't care about them. To put it another way, for someone to hear from you that Jesus loves them, they need to hear from you by your actions and your words that you love them too. That is, uh, that's the way that you salt the way. But see, if we don't do that, it's like someone walking on an icy sidewalk and, you know, maybe they've fallen sometime trying to come to the Lord. 
and they might not come back again. Now, others of us recognize, yeah, we're the salt of the earth. We're supposed to be doing this, but we do it for our own glory. So you help people, and you consider how good of a person you are. Uh, you make things for others, but you just want to be praised for it. You're not really just doing it for them. But Jesus uh, did not say that we do good works for our own glory. But rather, people will see our good works, and they will give glory to God. Finally, others of us recognize our need to salt the earth, and that it is for others, but our sinful nature so often prevents us. You really want to care for those people in your life. But there have been times where you actually did them harm. Perhaps instead of salting the icy way, you actually made it more slippery. And maybe someone's gotten hurt because of their sin. So whether we simply don't think we are the salt of the earth, or we do it for our own glory, or we want to be the salt of the earth, but our sinful nature prevents us, we can all struggle to salt the icy way for others to glorify. Our gospel passage had good news for the disciples. You know, Jesus did not say, you will be the salt of the earth after you do enough good things. He didn't say, um, you will be the salt of the earth, but only after you've become a good person. So you better get working on these things. No, what Jesus said is, y'all are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. That's Jesus' promise to the disciples. They didn't do something to earn this. Jesus gave this job to them as a free gift. More than this, Jesus didn't only enable them to do this job. He first gave them a new identity in him. Jesus changed who they were. He made them from regular people into his disciples. And he did that for them. And as disciples of Jesus, they stand forgiven. And as disciples of Jesus, they even begin to do good works. And where they fall and fail to do this and, and sin, God forgives their every sin and shortcoming. Now this was wonderful news for the disciples because, as you know, uh, the disciples did not do things perfectly. <laughs> um, there was one time the mother of two of the disciples came to Jesus and she wanted Jesus to glorify her sons. She says to Jesus, hey, put one of my sons on your left hand and one on your right hand in your kingdom. And it'll run. Um, later on, at, at Jesus' arrest and his death on the cross, the disciples abandoned Jesus. I mean, think about it. If people saw the disciples doing that, what would they think about Jesus? Ah, that God must not be worth following. Right? <laughs> but Jesus gave his life for those people. And he came back to them after he raised from the dead, and his words to them were not, oh, what were you doing? No, he said, peace be and Jesus later sent out those same disciples to be the salt of the earth that he had made them to be. Because they were in Jesus, they could be the salt of the earth. For Jesus would forgive their sins, and he sent them out to be salt, not in themselves, but in him. Did they ever forget this new identity Jesus gave them? Jesus reminded them. We've got his words recorded. Um, we just heard them, right? You are the salt of the earth. Did they ever lose their saltiness? Jesus restored it to them. Jesus did all this good to those who wanted to glorify themselves and actually abandoned him. See, in Jesus, his promise for them was true. You are salt of the earth. The 
The good news for us today is that we also are Jesus' disciples. And here's the guarantee of that. Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins. And he gives you new life in him. And now, because of what he has done for you, and who he has made you in him, you are something that you weren't before, apart from him. Because of Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus also sends us out to be the salt of the earth with our good works. Now, our relationship with God does not depend on our good works, but others' relationship with God certainly does. See, Jesus sends us out to do good works, to salt the earth, so that others might come to glorify God. Just like an icy sidewalk that's been salted and is now safe for them. So if you came here today thinking that, oh, gee, I'm not really the salt of the earth, <clears throat> Jesus reminds you, you are the salt of the earth. And it's a free gift from him. He's the one who gives you that identity. So y'all all are the salt of the earth. Now, if you came here seeking to glorify yourself as salt, God works repentance in you, uh, not just to leave you alone, but for the forgiveness of your sins. And Jesus takes sinners and he actually makes them salt again. And he sends us back out to do this job that he's given us. And if you came here desiring to be the salt of the earth, but prevented by your sin, here's the good news from God. All your sins are forgiven because of Jesus. So now, as you are the salt of the earth in Jesus, he sends you out to salt the ice way for others to glorify him. So the next time you're out uh, sprinkling a little salt on the ice, I urge you to remember Jesus' words here and do a good work for someone near you. They need you to salt the icy way to glorify him. You can do this um, not because it's something you'll do on your own, but because you are Jesus's. He has given you a new identity in him. He calls you his disciple, and he sends you out to be the salt of the earth. May God help us all to salt the icy way for others to glorify him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise to make confession of our faith as printed in the book. It's on page 7 at the bottom there, the Apostles' Creed. We say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and then he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you delight to loose the bonds of wickedness and undo the straps of the heavy yoke, that freed from sin's bondage, we may gladly receive your blessings. Preserve us from the lie that you are a cruel oppressor. Give us thankful hearts 
to rejoice that you are the giver of all good gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, preserve your church by your life-giving word. Open the lips of pastors to declare your just decrees and store them up in the hearts of your people that we may delight in your promises and abound in good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, give wisdom and courage to parents as they teach their children your ways. Make our homes havens of peace in a quarrelsome, self-seeking world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you declare that a young man may, be, may keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word. Protect children and youth against the siren calls of the devil, the world, and their own sinful nature. Grant delight in your testimonies as much as in all riches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, according to your wisdom, you establish rulers of this age for a time. Remember our president and our governor and all those you have placed in authority, that they might fulfill their duties with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, cause healing to spring up speedily for the sake of your Son. Have mercy upon those who suffer afflictions of sin in body and in mind. We lift up especially those to, to, uh, to us who are near and dear to us in this place. We ask that you would be with Dolores and Millie, Dennis and Libby, Darlene, Bonnie, Sheila, Leah, Stanley, uh, with Rogetta's nephew, her niece, and her friend, with Jana, with Randy, and with all those people that we bring to you uh, who are heavy on our hearts and who need you. Where you permit trial to remain, preserve your people in faith until the day when your light breaks forth like the dawn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in Christ your righteousness goes before us, and your glory is our rear guard. Answer our pleas for mercy this day in the gift of Christ's body and blood, and prepare all those who commune to receive him worthily and joyfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit that delivered from the spirit of this world. We may hold fast in faith to what you freely give us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we collect the offering and sing our next song.
rise of all the, all the things that uh, the hands made. Okay. In the name of our Lord, Creator, Savior, and Spirit, who calls us to do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. Amen. To you we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. To you we remember our Christian promise. Help those in need, to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, and be a loving neighbor to all people of the earth. We humbly dedicate our gifts of love to you. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless these items that we give to those in need. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole work of the Shepherd of the Lake Church, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. To you be all glory and honor, now and forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, before we begin our, our service of the sacrament, I invite you just to read our communion statement there. And if you won't be joining us for communion today, I still invite you to come up front to the, the railing. Just signify that you, you won't commune by going like this. And I will then give you a blessing uh, from Jesus. We're so glad that you're here uh, and are able to hear the gospel with us. So um, we'll continue now with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. salvation by a second act, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Christ died, broken for you, that he's risen for you. Not only this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Turn to page 12 in the bulletin to continue with the song called The Nook de Vix. Please write. us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, 
You would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our last song. <laughs>
I invite you to stick around um, just for some, uh, some time of fellowship together. It's always good to see how everyone's doing. Especially if I haven't seen you in a while, God, come say hi to me. Um, but God's blessings on your week in Jesus. Or anyway.